And so I want to talk about how to win in sales when all the circumstances might be against you. How do you win and create your income? You know, I'm curious, if I were to give you a referral and you called my friend three times and she didn't call back, what do you train your sales staff to say in the fourth voicemail? There's a difference between obtaining a referral and obtaining referral business. Hi Tim, it's uh, Tamara with Advanced Results, 704-900-5855. Again, that's 704-900-5855. Mel Miller told me something awesome about you. Give me a call. <laughs> That's it. Hi, my name is Brady Drummond Ryan. I work for Atlantic Bay Mortgage as a mortgage banker. I've been in the industry about 15 years. About two years ago, I found my production was lagging considerably. Uh, the first two months of the year, I had only closed about 300000 in loan volume. That was not enough to live on. Uh, I was fortunate to uh, see Tamara in a uh, chamber meeting where she presented on Sales Mastery. And uh, I was really impressed with her referral form, which she handed out at the end. She called me about a week later and asked me uh, how many calls I had made. I, of course, lied and said not enough, even though it was zero. And she invited me to take her class, which I did. So it was two days, six hours a day of calling. And uh, it was a Thursday and a Friday. I was so excited. I went out Saturday morning, got on the phone, and uh, made 13 calls, booked a couple appointments, and set up two uh, to new uh, uh, loan referrals. And within the next six weeks, I made 165 dials and ended up locking 1.8 million in loan volume. So that being said, I would highly recommend you uh, take one of Tamara's prospecting mastery classes. Uh, they are what have made her the number one sales trainer in America. And for me, I am definitely and always will be her number one fan. Now I had a property management company hire me. They were doing good business, and I noticed they didn't have a lot of documents that, support, that supported good sales. And so I did a custom referral form for the company. They made it a standard procedure form. Anytime someone came on, you, you know, you sign your life away, and then here you go, one more form. We train the attorneys to do it too. So we got referrals for all the vendors. They uh, collected 275 referrals their first year and closed 75, which resulted in an additional or extra $200,000 in income. Then I said, well, you only got 75 out of 275. That, that sucks. You should hire me again. And so I came back, and I'm like, look, referrals never expire. Business cards don't expire. It's just you can't call people and say, hey, I met you a year and a half ago, and I need business. Do you want to meet so I can tell you what I do? Like, you can't say that today, right? But what do you say to someone you met out networking and eight months go by? You can't say, oh, hey, we met. Let's meet. Well, why am I meeting you? If there's no perceived value, they'll blow you off. Right? Because there's nothing, not enough in it for them. So here's the thing. I just want you to remember that eventually everybody buys. Okay? It's just when. It's not if. It's when. And even if they have a great relationship with the current person they're currently working with, don't let that dismay you either. I did a class two months ago, and a guy in there in sales, 25 years, threw up before he made a phone call. I mean, I'm like, do you do this every day? I mean, he threw up. <laughs> in the trash can, like right in the room. We had to move it out of the room. Okay, so nothing surprises me. A lot of people cry, that's okay. I got a lot of criers, but cry means healthy, right? And uh, he was so nervous to make calls. I'm like, this tells me you haven't been making phone calls. And we need to make sure your mindset is in the right place and also to make sure that you don't put your faith in your circumstances. Because when you do that, you become emotional, and when you become emotional, you lose. So the difference is perceived value. You know, someone said, well, you can get that same thing at this other jeweler for a different price. It's not about that. It's like, why does Tamara go shop and buy guest jeans for $250 when I can go to Costco and get it for $29.95? It's the same thing. Perception. I'll be thinner. Okay, here's my, here's my credit card. So it's all about leading people. But here's what happens with most salespeople. Let's say, where are we? We're in Wisconsin, and I'm going to fly back to Charlotte, right? So let's say I'm going to get in the plane, and I'm going to take off, but if you don't prospect, you don't take off. But let's say, you know what, I prospect, oh, but I can't manage my time. You crash and burn. But let's say, you know, ah, I prospect to manage my time, but I can't close. You crash and burn. Today, you have to be great at everything. And I want to show you some classier ways to building more business, rather than the same old sales jargon that I think has been repeated for 50 years that just doesn't work today. It just doesn't happen. I mean, think of it this way. If I were to give you a referral, and, you, and I said, look, 
they, you know, own this shop, very successful. I mentioned you, they're, they're totally open to talking to you. And you call them, they don't call back. You leave a voicemail. You call again, they don't call back. You call a third time and they don't call back. What would you say on the fourth voicemail? Nothing? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, we consider that stalking today. So if you call and you don't leave a message, we do consider that stalking. <laughs> All right. Huh? So she said, this is my last call. I don't want to bother you. Now, if you left that on the voicemail, would that prospect feel guilty for not calling you back or passionate and excited to call you back? They feel guilty. They feel guilty. This is my last call. I mean, now they're in trouble, right? And then they'll hide. They'll run from you. Even the good Christians will. I mean, they will hide from you at the grocery store. <laughs> it will happen. But here's the thing. What happens is, is we're ending the sale before it ever began. And your new mindset is eventually everybody buys. So I want to show you a process that will increase your odds of winning more often. Does that sound good? I find salespeople that have more discipline and follow structure make more money than the salespeople that are super salesy and bubbly and happy and all that kind of stuff. And I, I'm a big believer you should never learn from someone that's not willing to go first. And I built my business on cold calling. So um, I know what it's like. I know what it's like not to make money. I know what it's like to make lots of money. And uh, I know what consistency and behavior can do to, to somebody's income. If you make one dial a day that's intentional versus someone that makes 50 dials on Friday, that person making one dial a day will make more money because they're filling their pipeline. And most salespeople don't even make five dials in a week. They're just responding to, you know, who called them or who opened a newsletter or whatever. They met someone networking. But what would happen if we started some intentional outbound activity? Now, by a show of hands, how many of you here um, enjoy prospecting? Okay, got a couple people. The rest of you um, seem depressed. <laughs> I mean, that's what you do. You're hired as a salesperson. <laughs> so here's the thing, if you don't like selling, then you should get a job or you should learn to love it. If you don't like it, what that's telling me is that you don't like making new friends. Because when you're in sales, you're a professional friend finder. That's your job, is to make new friends. But if you don't like people, you shouldn't be in sales. So I'm not a big believer in motivation. I'm a believer in modeling, which means finding people that already have the result you desire and mimicking them. If, if you don't like prospecting and I show you these cool techniques of getting through gatekeepers or some things that really work, you won't receive it because you don't like it. So how many of you here enjoy prospecting? Okay, so let's just try that again. <laughs> it's called fake it till you make it, which means I'm just going to say it and then I'm going to make you believe it. So how many people here love prospecting? Woo! All right, we are in a sales conference now. Excellent. If you used to believe that prospecting it just wasn't your thing, when we're done here in 90 minutes, I'm going to show you that it's going to be your thing because, you know, they say ha uh, money doesn't buy happiness, but it does buy everything else. So let's make sure <laughs> that we're making a lot of money because it's your choice. It's your choice how much money you're actually making. What is one skill, if you were absolutely excellent at it, would help you increase your income the most? What is that one skill for you? Do you like accountability? I'm going to convince you that you do because people that are really successful have accountability. The majority of people I run into though, they just have intentions. I want to make more money this year than I did last year. There's a problem with that though because what if I give you five dollars? You will have reached your intention, but I bet you're not going to be very satisfied. If you create a system for yourself to be successful and you know exactly who to call, when to call, what to say, those things are going to make you more money. What I'm going to have you do is pull out your phone and what we're going to do is go onto your calendar and I'm going to have you schedule what I call a daily must. That's Monday through Friday, block out 10 minutes. Now this is simple but not easy. People pay me a lot of money to coach them daily. I have a program, a three-month program, where I put small groups together. We do video conference coaching every week with daily accountability. That means if you don't check in at the time you're supposed to, I call you at 2 a.m. <laughs> yeah, it's lots of fun. And I get your spouse's phone number. And um, 
I stalk you. So uh, the point is daily must. Monday through Friday, schedule the next two weeks, a 10-minute time block, and just write daily must. Your daily must is now the one thing you need to do that's an outbound activity to increase your income. So examples would be calling and asking for referrals, making a cold call. Okay? You could send out you know, two postcards to somebody. You could call someone from LinkedIn. Right? I'm looking at different things you can be doing to grow your business. You could call and ask for uh, five-star Google reviews. Vertical means up. You want to be referred to the rich people. Yes, wouldn't that be better? Isn't it better to insure bigger companies, multiple locations, than just a single unit? Yes? Yes. Yes, OK. So we need to ask for that. But how many of you have actually, in the last month, called your customers and asked for referrals? I'm a big believer that it's friendship first, business second. But many people do business first, friendship second. It doesn't work that way today. Because we do business with people we like and trust. You never, ever, ever want to leave a reason why you're calling on voicemail. Like Tamara said, all these things about you, then there's no reason for him to call you back. Okay, less is more. We want to make sure we don't pitch on voicemail. Okay? There's a little bit of psychology in here. We want to make sure we're growing and building those relationships. But if you say, hey, I got your name from Tamara, and she said, you know, you're looking for XYZ insurance, and I'd love to help you, F minus. Because you're pitching on voicemail. So you used to hate cold calling. Okay? Used to? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. Good. Just a little coaching there. <laughs> so I just want to show you how to be better at it so that you have some success and you can do it. Because here's what happens. If you don't learn to love cold calling, when the market turns, it's the market's fault and you become a victim. Here's the thing about selling. It's not about what you're selling. It's about what they want to buy. It's not about what I'm going to say to you. It's what do you need to hear. The difference is the same thing with referrals. If you don't ask for them, referrals have nothing to do with you and growing your business. And most people position it that way. Referrals have everything to do with your customers looking good with their buddies. Does that make sense? Because here's the thing. If I refer you to John, and I give you his name and cell phone number, you leave a voicemail like what I just gave you, and then he calls back and you share all the nice things I said about him, he's then going to call me and thank me for introducing him to you, the insurance guy and gal. See the difference? And now because you made me look good, you're going to get every referral from me for the rest of your life. It's called a preferred relationship. The number one question I get asked in sales, and this is from experienced salespeople, is they say, how do I become friends with this guy? I've known him for 10 years, but I don't know how to be better friends. Number one question I get asked. And experienced salespeople struggle the most in training because they're like, well, I prospected 20 years ago, but I haven't done it in so long. I don't know how to do it, but I also don't have as much money as I want to have. So how do you do that? How do you actually pick up the phone and build business? Referrals is where we need to start because, you know, um, it's easier. People already know and like you. And then once you get referrals, then you get into prospecting. Okay? Now, I believe you have to be diversified and practice all kinds of business. Now, most of my business is referrals, but I still cold call because I teach it. Right? And it's fun because you're in sales, so you only eat what you kill. Now I'm in the meeting and I'm trying to get them to pick me for their keynote presentation, right? So I go to the guy in the room, uh, the one that I have to follow up with, they're all in their suits and everything, and I said, well, um, you know, there's an awkward silence, it's just awful, and I go, well, Ryan, how'd, how'd you meet your wife? So he burst out laughing, and he goes, I met her at Food Lion, tells the whole story, everyone laughs. So I have to follow up with Ryan. So I go to call Ryan, I go, hey, Ryan, now I, nor you know, I could have said, well, you know, hey, Ryan, it's Tamara, just calling to see if you're going to pick me, it'll be really good, I promise. Um, but instead I said, you know, hey Ryan, I'm at Food Lion, but I don't see any hot men. Which one did you meet your wife at? <laughs> right? How do you get three or four or five or six referrals with names and cell phone numbers from clients that love doing business with you? How do you make cold calls, but more importantly, actually get people to call you back? How do you build business in a classy way? The key here is for us to learn the buying strategies of our prospect, but also learn how can we shift in our selling approach. In my opinion, that's a little bit classier. Rather than saying, who do you know that wants to go through the same process you did, that means I don't know how to articulate what I'm selling. And the number one reason why a customer doesn't call you and give you referrals is what? What am I going to do to shift so that I'm following a structure rather than following my emotions? I'm nice to cold callers, right? And. Uh, <laughs> uh, they call, and usually they're pretty terrible. I'm just calling to see if you're interested in XYZ. No, I'm all set. Click. Okay. You can't say that. All right. 
So I get a call for like the hundredth time for a security system. But the guy says something different. He goes, and I go, no, I think I'm all set. He goes, but ma'am, what if you have to press that police button or that firefighter button? And automatically I say, oh, I'm all set. But then I'm like, and then he, he hangs up on me. Okay, so first of all, obviously you're not a friend if you hang up on people. You create enemies, okay? But then I start thinking about it. And then literally about two hours later, now I live in Valentine, it's a nice area, and out parked, because I have a home office, out parked in front, now down the street there's this couch sleeper kid that's like a drug addict, was parked outside of my house, door open, shooting up with something and like rolling smoking pot in front of my house. So I'm like, oh my God, I need the button, right? And I call 911, get the police out here, blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, okay, now I need a security system. But guess what? The guy didn't leave his number because he hung up on me. Here's the thing when it comes to friendship first. If you're cold calling and someone's mean to you, if you're a friend, you wouldn't hang up on them. You would be like, oh, my God, it sounds like you're having a bad day. Are you okay? That's what a friend would do. But what does a cold caller, a prospector do? Mm, I hang up on you. I don't like you anymore. <laughs> we can't do that because we're... Our job is professional friend finders. Our, your job is to make friends. And if you don't like people, you got to go get a job. Well, it's not about who you know. It's about who wants to know you. That's the shift today. Here's the difference. Here's what I want to do. Is I want to be that person for you when you have that voice in your head that say, no, I don't have to prospect. I've made it so far without. I want to kill that voice because that's preventing you from making more money. Right? That little voice in your head, yeah, I love it. Nope, but it sucks. We need to kill that voice, and we need to put new voices in your head. And then what I want to do is when you're walking from the plate to the dugout, I want to make sure that I'm opening up a big, wide door for you to walk through so that you don't strike out as much. Let's make some phone calls. <laughs>